Hello, friends, colleagues, and distinguished guests. It is my pleasure and honor to have been invited by the State Examination Center of Azerbaijan to welcome this group to the 45th International Association for Educational Assessment Annual Conference and to share with you some of my insights on the current state of Azerbaijan's economic and educational transformation. I regret that another important commitment has precluded me from being there in person, as I had hoped to have engaged with many of you in stimulating conversations. Please let me begin by introducing you to some of my own work in the area of social transformations as an entry point for my address today. As a faculty member at Columbia University's Teachers College, I have spent much of my academic career engaging in critical and interdisciplinary research and teaching on social transformations in post-conflict, post-crisis, and developing countries. Early on in my life, I survived the horrific war and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia. Educational institutions in my old country were destroyed and educational processes interrupted. Many teachers were killed, injured, or left the country to escape the violence. During that time, and in the absence of adequately trained teachers as one of the top math and physics students, I was asked to teach, becoming one of the youngest teachers in my region of Bosnia during that war. This year marks 25 years since I first walked into a classroom as a teacher. I fell in love with teaching then, realizing the transformative power education can have in young lives. Today, when I work with my graduate students at Columbia on research projects ranging from financial inclusion of poor women in India to studying impact of school uniforms on the marginalized in Mongolia or how to de-radicalize the radicalized, my focus is on changing paradigms, changing how we think about problems we face in education. I question ways in which we examine and study challenging societal phenomena, including corruption, social transformations, radicalization, marginalization, social mobility, inclusion, and role of women in development. Last year, I was invited by the U.S. State Department and Azerbaijan's Ministry of Education to work in Azerbaijan, which provided me with a unique opportunity to learn about Azerbaijan's educational system and its current opportunities and challenges. I would like to share some of my insights I gained during that experience with you today. Educational corruption has adversely impacted the development of many nations around the world. In recent months, even in the United States, we have been reminded how the elites can be involved in educational corruption, bribes and cheating on standardized tests. In my own research, I have shown that bribes are detrimental to both economic and social development. Even more importantly, my work has demonstrated that students are most affected when corruption facilitates their loss of trust in education as a social mobility mechanism. With corruption in education, students often witness favor reciprocations amongst the elites or see their influential peers or friends pass exams and obtain diplomas thanks to their social and political connections. As these non-pecuniary forms of corruption become systemic, students first lose trust in the system. Then they lose motivation to work hard and some eventually decide to drop out of school or even leave their home countries. In the past, Azerbaijan has seen some of these effects in response to corruption in its own educational system. But unlike many other settings I have studied over the years, Azerbaijan has done something remarkable in the area of educational testing that may serve as a lesson for other countries. The country's State Examination Commission, a national governmental entity responsible for the standardized educational testing in Azerbaijan, has played a key role in rebuilding public's trust in the merited mobility in education. The very first question I asked when I arrived to Azerbaijan was how did the SEC do it? And here's how. SEC leveraged technology to minimize subjective assessment. SEC also expanded its collaboration with institutions like Educational Testing Services, UNESCO, and other international agencies, which has helped students in Azerbaijan regain trust in the legitimacy of tests conducted by SEC. SEC did not focus only on improving transparency and objectivity of testing in higher education, but it has also administered the standardized tests at the high school level from 2012 on. You may wonder what prompted them to expand their role. Prior to 2012, top students in high schools were not always top performers on the college entrance exams, suggesting that testing and grading in high schools may have been subjective. Once SEC started to administer high school testing, students' performance on their college entrance exams correlated more closely with their high school test performance. Perhaps most importantly, SEC's practices and evidence-based approach has improved public's confidence in standardized tests that are not broadly seen as reliable and objective, 
even if other areas in education remain in need of improvement. This has led to an increase in college applications over the years, as well as a broader access to higher education for those from rural areas, for the poor, and for the internally displaced persons. With the return of public confidence in standardized testing, even a test prep educational industry has emerged, expanding job opportunities for Azerbaijan's teachers. What is most salient about the case of Azerbaijan, particularly for those of us concerned with corruption and education's role in social mobility, is that SEC's work demonstrates how critical political will is in any meaningful transformation. These improvements by no means suggest that Azerbaijan has completed its transformation in education, but they do show that educational corruption can be lessened if not eradicated and that even if significant work remains, educational transformation is indeed possible. But it is only possible if one, political will is there, two, if the resources to support transformational change in education are provided, and three, if change is based on evidence-based approach. While Azerbaijan has had remarkable success in improving transparency of its testing practices, the key challenge that remains is to expand this kind of success to other domains in education. In that regard, Azerbaijan has responded to the 2008 global economic crisis by introducing, fostering, and diversifying various new subspecialties in information technology, engineering, sustainability, agriculture, and tourism. These changes were instituted in hope of minimizing the country's past dependence on oil. However, to fully support its economic growth and transformation, the country will need to develop a more symbiotic and effective relationship between the economy and education. As part of that relationship, Azerbaijan's focus should be on improving the quality of education and competencies of its teachers at all levels. In particular, significant performance differentials still exist between the elites and non-elites. Presently, one-third of all top performers on college entrance exams are private school graduates, indicating that improvements in public education are still needed. School children in general tend to demonstrate poor performance on open test questions that require critical and analytical skills. At the preschool level, less than one-third of children ages 1 through 5 attend preschool, but even for the few that do, preschool education does not seem to provide positive, long-term, and cumulative effects that broader research suggests preschool education can provide. As Azerbaijan works to stimulate new areas of economic development and international cooperation, the education sector will need to sharpen its focus on the foreign language training as well. Azerbaijan's national statistics suggest that about one in four English language teachers do not have a higher education degree. And even for those teachers who have higher education degrees, many lack competencies in their subject matter. Another and perhaps most important challenge that Azerbaijan faces is that its universities are teaching institutions, but not research hubs, weakening what should be a symbiotic relationship between education and the economy. Transforming its universities into research institutions will require a broader structural and cultural shift in education. In closing, the case of Azerbaijan's educational evolution teaches us that inspirational and transformational stories exist in education but that they are often driven by the strong political will to institute a positive change. A government's commitment of resources and its determination to articulate new practices and policies based on evidence and research can yield measurable results. Witnessing how Azerbaijan has succeeded in transforming its standardized testing practices, I am hopeful that Azerbaijan's success will extend to improving the broader relationship between the nation's economy and education. Thank you.